My name is Irene Stewart, and I'm a retention coordinator here, and I'm going to be talking to you today about six different study strategies that you might want to incorporate into your, um, your weekly and, and your daily study. So my plan is to introduce you to six different strategies. I want to explain to you, give you a couple of tips of how you might use that strategy. And I've prepared an example for each one. I'm hoping that together we might be able to brainstorm at least one additional example. The first strategy I want to talk to you about is this idea of using spaced practice. It's a pretty simple idea. Instead of cramming all your studying into one session, the idea is to spread it out over time. So for example, if you have a test on, uh, say next week, Wednesday, instead of studying for four hours all at once the night before, you study an hour a night for four nights in a row. And that's a, a, a better way to study in terms of being able to transfer that information from long term to short term memory. So the idea is that you plan your study sessions ahead of time and to plan to study several times over a week or study each day instead of all of once. So for the second tile on space practice, um, certainly any opportunity you, ha you have to go back and do quick review can be really helpful. And that could mean something as simple as taking 10 minutes at the end uh, um, at the end of the day to do a quick review of the notes that you've taken in any of the classes that you had in that day. On the weekend, doing a quick review of all of the classes that you've had and just taking another quick look at your notes again. And then number three talks about this idea that even when you are studying, it is good to study in 20 to 30 minute blocks and then taking a short break. Now, I'm not saying taking like a 15 minute break, but to stand up, stretch, uh, um, take a little bit of a walk, for example, just to allow your brain to process the information that you have given it in that 20 to 30 minutes can be very, very helpful. So here's an example of how you might use space practice, for example, in an introduction to accounting uh, class. So let's say you're learning about financial statements. And uh, so instead of spending one night in a week uh, studying all about financial statements, you spend 20 minutes on Monday looking at the balance sheet. On Wednesday, you take a look at the income statement. On Friday, you take a look at the cash flow statement. And then on the weekends, you take a half an hour and review all three. So if you're thinking, friends in the uh, chat room, or if you, again, if you'd like to turn on your microphone and speak with me, you're more than welcome to do that as well. If you think about your own classes, can you think of an example of how you might use spaced practice in one of your courses? Oh, excellent. Thank you, Abby. So you may be studying the different branches of the government and how they work and what they do. So absolutely. On one day, you might study what the federal government does and is responsible for. And then you might take a look at the provincial government. And then you might take a look at municipal municipal government on two other days. And on the fourth day, perhaps what you do is create a chart where you list all the different types of governments and then jot down how they're the same, how they're, di they're different, what they're responsible for. Great. Thank you so much for that example. Another excellent strategy, and one I don't know that we necessarily do as often as we should, is retrieval practice. The idea here is that we practice bringing information to mind when you're looking at your notes. And that's certainly what you would be doing in a test situation, right? You're trying to access the information that you know and apply it to the test question. We spend a lot of time putting information in our head. We also need to spend some time getting the information back out of our head. So one way that you could do that is to create questions before you begin studying and then study to find the answers, jotting down some of the, of uh, jotting down a quick answer in your own words or in short forms to the questions that you've created to guide you through your study. For example, after studying, it can be as simple as, uh, trying to recall what is the most important things that I studied today and seeing if you can recall details. 
Another way that you can do retrieval practice is to create flashcards. So on one side, you put questions that are important. And on the other side, you put answers. Excellent way to study is to simply create the flashcards. Then you can take those flashcards with you and do short study sessions where you just test yourself on the questions. Look at the question, mentally think of what the answer might be, flip it around and check. If you've got the answer, good. Put a little check mark beside it. If you get three check marks on a card, you can take that card out of your deck because you know that material if you've managed to do it three times in a row. Another excellent way to retrieve information is to teach it to someone else, to explain it to a family member or a friend, that that's an excellent way, because as you are trying to explain that information, you are retrieving details and the language to explain it to someone else. That can be a really powerful practice. So for example, you might be studying Ohm's law in your basic circuit analysis course. After learning about the equation, close your textbook, try to write down the equation from memory, then try to explain how you'd use that to solve a problem. Now the Ohm's law can be used in a number of different circuits and the analysis of circuits. You could create a series of flashcards that cover all of the different examples that you may have covered in class or in your textbook and use that to practice how to apply that equation. All right, then I'm gonna turn it over to you. Can anyone in the room think of a way they might be able to use retrieval practice in their course? Or if you can't think of one for your course, think of one from another program that you might like to share. All right, I'm not seeing anyone give me an answer, so let me think about this. Another way that you could do retrieval practice is to study with a friend, all right, where you quiz each other. And uh, so Marco and I might be studying and I might say to Marco, uh, Marco, explain this concept to me. He explains it to me. I check it against my notes and let him know areas where he might have missed a detail or he might have missed un misunderstood something. And doing that back and forth is another way to test yourself and use retrieval practice. All right. Our third example, or our third idea for a study strategy is elaboration. And in here, what you're trying to do is explain ideas in details and to try to make connections to what you already know. And that might be connections to things you've already learned in that course, or it might be connections between courses that you're taking in a particular semester. So how do you do that? The idea here is you ask why, how, what if, all right, about a particular concept or a particular idea to try to go a little bit deeper and to make connections relating that new information to something that you already know can be very helpful. And again, this idea of trying to explain it out loud, uh, finding things, finding your own words to explain an idea or a concept can be uh, an excellent way to help you understand the concept and to, again, move that concept from short term into long term memory. So here's an example. Let's say you're in a introduction to so sociology class and you're learning about this idea of social norms. Well, you could begin to ask yourself things like, how do social norms influence me? Uh, why do we have certain social norms? What are some examples of social norms in my community? Okay, and then try to relate it to things you know and things that you have experienced, all right? And then um, try to explain how those norms might be different uh, uh, in, uh, so th how that might be different in other co cultures. Uh, connecting these ideas to your own experiences, to things you have seen and that you have heard and that you have participated in, <coughs> excuse me, can really deepen your understanding. Is there an example uh, that um, anyone in the room, Olivia, Abby, I'm going with Katy until I'm told differently uh, that you might be able to think of a way that you could use elaboration? 
Irene, I did put in the chat room that I refer to elaboration as spiral curriculum, passing over the same topic, but each time at a higher level, taking in some new special cases that I may have avoided earlier for simplicity. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Next strategy is this uh, idea of interleaving. And that's, I, I find that one, uh, this one really fascinating. It's the idea of mixing up the topics or subjects while you're studying. Okay. So the idea is that let's say you have a three hour block that you're going to commit to doing homework, to doing um, preparation work, studying um, outside of class. Maybe it's tonight you've got three hours you plan to set aside for studying. Instead of studying one thing for all three hours, the idea is to switch between different subjects. Uh, uh, for example, even every half hour, I'm going to spend a half an hour on this subject, take a short break, and then move on to a next. If you do need to study, or maybe it's a one hour session, and you're going to study, um, say, for example, a math in a math course, uh, what you might want to do instead is to change the types of problems you're studying, do a word problem here, do a more, uh, you know, uh, formula uh, problem in the next 20 minutes, and break up your session that way. The idea here is really to not over-focus. Um, when you avoid studying just one thing over and over, your mind stays engaged, it stays interested, and it is about always moving that information into your long-term memory. Oh, Olivia, that's an excellent suggestion. This does also work when um, um, doing different assignments in the same session, right? So that's an excellent idea. Thank you for sharing that. Um, my example was, for example, let's say you're in the principles of marketing and you're learning about the four P's of marketing product place, um, sorry, product price, place and promotion. Um, instead of trying to study all four at the same time or only studying one of those four concepts, um, mixing it up by spending only 15 minutes on each concept and then coming back and looking at the uh, entire picture of the four. This helps helps you see the connections between all four of those different pieces of the, um, uh, the practice of marketing, and that can be easier to understand. So thank you for your example, Olivia. That takes care of our generated example for this one, and we can move on to the next. Although, one good tip I have for you is, uh, let's say you're going to do three, say, half hour study sessions, start with your most difficult subject or the subject that you like the least first. Start that difficult subject when you're freshest when you're studying. All right. Um, and then know that you're going to study this for 20 minutes, a half an hour before you move on to something that maybe you feel more comfortable with or that you are um, more interested in. Okay, that's another way that you can use interleaving. Okay, concrete examples. Uh, this is our fifth study strategy. And certainly with concepts and ideas and theories, anytime you can use and find a real life example, it can help you understand those abstract ideas and it can help you remember them. In some ways, that's what we've been doing all along is coming up with some concrete examples. Um, so what you, how you can do this is look for examples in your textbook. OK, or online that show that idea in action. That's one way to use concrete examples. You can also make up your own examples. Use your own experience from from um, your life, your friends, your family, uh, people that you know, that you follow, that you're interested in. Um, that can really help you um, connect to some of these abstract ideas that you're learning. You can also try to visualize, perhaps drawing pictures or diagrams to see how that the idea works can be very valuable. 
So my concrete example of the strategy concrete examples is this. So this one is looking at an example from say an engineering tech class where you're studying introduction to materials and you're learning about materials that have different kinds of properties uh, to help you remember and distinguish between all of these different kinds of materials that are available. The concrete example ideas that you would come up with every day items that are made from metal that would match that particular kind of um, 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 material. So for example, a car engine or a soda can made from two different kinds of metals. You might think about a plastic bottle versus a rubber band. Uh, whatever uh, example that you can come up with that you're familiar with that will help you understand uh, what that particular material is and how it differs from the other materials. So is there uh, another um, example from the room for um, about a course maybe that you're taught you're taking that has uh, a lot of theory or a lot of concepts. Abby's got an example in my social sociology and psychology or psychological class. I'm terrible at pronouncing things. There are a lot of diagrams that we draw that help me understand how people interact with each other and why they do do so. Absolutely. Uh, diagrams like that can also make those kind of fuzzy concepts more real. And that's what we're trying to do with concrete examples. Our last strategy kind of builds on that same idea, and that's dual coding. When you have the ability to, whenever you're learning, combine words with pictures, it can make it more real, it can make it more concrete, and it can also make it easier to remember as well as understand. So here you can make simple drawings or diagrams to go along with your notes. You might want to make a diagram to show how different ideas connect together. If you have a good textbook, often it will have good visuals. You can look at charts, pictures, maps that explain the material. You could also look up an example on Google. And instead of looking at the written work, only look at the images that come up. And the idea of pairing words and images together, certainly following up any pictures or charts or maps that you see in your text and writing your own explanations for them is another way of connecting those things. Um, Olivia has shared in the chat room that in one of their classes, she's learning about different models and contexts of child psychopathology, I hope I have that right, and how it com uh, contributes to mental health and well-being. Yes, um, and, and some of those kinds of concepts um, can be very vague and very abstract, but then when you give it a concrete example, then it makes it so much more clear. It gives us something that we can relate to. OK, and you can do the same kind of thing that if you can draw a small picture for each one of those concepts, um, for example, that can help you remember because then you have the words and the pictures. And when you're retrieving that information later, you can connect the, the two. Uh, Victoria shares that you did a mind map in English class. Excellent. And then you can use drawings to help you remember the concepts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good examples. Um, so these are different things that we can do. Um, and, and it really does take us away from that kind of traditional studying that we're often presented with. This idea that we go to class and we listen and we take a bunch of notes. And then we take those notes home and the way we study is we open up our, our books and we read over our notes again. In a lot of ways, that's a very passive way to do things. These six examples that I've shared with you are trying to break you out of that really passive way of studying and giving you some ideas of some other things you can do, like elaboration, okay, um, expanding um, 
and, and talking about what it is that you're learning, um, the interleaving, um, moving from one subject to another in order to keep your brain active and engaged, concrete examples and dual coding, taking it that next step instead of just taking information in but working with that information and creating something new, looking at an image and creating a new explanation uh, in your own words about that, taking an idea and creating or finding a new image to go along with it. Um, I do think these are really uh, powerful strategies. I want to tell you that, um, oh, I missed the, the really good uh, example I had here for using words and image, and, and I use the example of the water cycle. Um, but I want to tell you that I didn't come up with these strategies on my own. There's actually a group of uh, professors uh, in the university um, arena who have done a lot of studying on ways to study. And these are st six strategies that they can link directly to improved learning and improved understanding in college students. So this is uh, strategies that are backed by science. I have included uh, a QR code that you can scan. Um, alternately, uh, the email address is not difficult. I'm going to put it right in here. It is learning scientists.org if you would like to learn more about these different strategies or some have some handouts about these strategies it is available to you there um, if you have any questions would like to do any kind of a follow-up with this workshop um, i am available most days at south campus you can find me uh, my office is at the back of the study rooms that are just inside of the door of the library at south campus on the second floor i'm also available downtown and in Chatham um, at different times through the week. I can meet with you there if you would like. I'm happy to make a little trip. Uh, if you'd like to meet with me or speak with me, please contact me at istuart at stclaircollege.ca. Um, I would love to hear from you.